Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel, and today I want to talk about the RX 580 and potentially who should be buying that new card from AMD that actually just launched today. Let's go. So for those of us that remember last year's launches of the new RX 480 line and 470s, as well as the 10 series cards from NVIDIA, uh, we may remember that the prices being charged at launch were somewhat outrageous in a lot of cases, especially cards like the 480 that were often going for way above their MSRP. I am happy to report that at least right now on Newegg, and on Amazon as well, I did look a little bit earlier, the prices are about where they should be, and AMD is spot on with the $230 price tag for the 8 gigabyte 580. Now, as of right now, Gigabyte does have a variant of the 580 that's actually going for $220 on Newegg. And again, that's the 8 gigabyte version, the MSRP being $230. This is a really relieving thing to see from a video card launch, something we didn't get treated to last year really at all. It seems also worth noting that at least with a quick browsing of Newegg's 8 gigabyte versions of the RX 480, there aren't really a lot of really steep discounts there yet. So if you're looking at a new video card and the 580 or 480 are both on your radar, definitely go with the 580 right now because the 480s just aren't discounted enough to justify picking one of them up over the 580. Now, just like last year, the 580 is gonna launch with a four gigabyte, or really has launched, with a four gigabyte and an eight gigabyte variant. So, you may be asking yourself right off the bat which one you really should go for. Now, the four gigabyte variants come in as cheap as $190. Again, the cheapest being a gigabyte variant, a $30 price difference between the eight gigabyte version of that card. So for comparison's sake, I pulled up an old hardware unboxed video that covered the RX 480 8GB version versus the RX 480 4GB version. Now this should still be applicable between the 8GB version and 4GB version of the 580s because we are still looking at the Polaris architecture on the cards. Now. I would go ahead and recommend spending the extra $30 to upgrade to the 580 with the 8 gigabyte version rather than the 4 gigabyte version. In the benchmark that you see on your screen from Hardware Unboxed, and by the way, the link will be in the description for this video for more of their benchmarks, as well as linked up in the card above, you'll notice that the 4 gigabyte version of the 480 versus the 8 gigabyte version produces just 59% of the average frame rate of the 8 gigabyte version at 1440p. That's a really big upgrade for 30 extra dollars in this particular game. Now, obviously, you may not see those types of gains across the board in a lot of games, especially games where you're already running beyond the refresh rate of your monitor, where you won't really see the benefit, things like MOBAs or other esports titles. But if you're a budget minded gamer that's looking for the most bang for your buck, I really think the 588 gigabyte version is going to be the best solution for you. In fact, Bitwit just ran a video today about gaming at 1440p on the 580 8GB variant, and the results were extremely encouraging. Sure, you may have to tweak the settings a little bit here and there to really get your frame rates where you want them, preferably in that 60fps neighborhood, if not higher, but you're still going to get better results than just gaming at 1080p, even if you're likely gaming on those ultra settings. So if you have a 1440p monitor, but you're still trying to stay within something of a budget, this card may be the perfect solution for you, at least for the moment until Nvidia comes back with their own response to the 580. So the grand question that everyone's going to be asking now is, who should be buying the 580? Well, the answer isn't exactly simple. If you're already running a 480 or a 10 series card from Nvidia from the same generation, like the 1060 6 gigabyte version, there's really absolutely no reason to upgrade. Yes, you'll likely see a little bit of a frame boost in your games, but it's not enough to justify buying a brand new graphics card. Those of you that will find these cards extremely exciting are people that are coming from older generation graphics cards. Things like the 700 series, the 200 or 300 series from AMD, or maybe people that are just building brand new systems and are trying to stay within a somewhat good budget but still get extremely good performance at your 1080p gaming or possibly even 1440p. If, however, you're mostly just an eSports game player and you're not really into a lot of the modern AAA titles, uh, then you may not really want to look at the 580. It offers a lot more performance than you're actually going to need for games like MOBAs or uh, CSGO or some of those other eSports games. Also, on the other end of the 
scale. If you're an enthusiast that wants to play games at 4K, this is definitely not the card for you. This is a budget-minded gaming card, but it's targeted at the mainstream consumer that is likely going to be playing mostly 1080p games and just looking for really good quality there. And as an improvement to the RX 480, which was already right in that sweet spot of 1080p gaming, the RX 580 should be a nice little improvement for AMD to continue pushing those sort of mid-range card sales and hopefully really build us up towards the Vega launch, which will target the more enthusiast class of gamers. So look, I can't tell you what card you should buy, but if you are, or at least looking in that range of mid-tier cards, then the RX 580 should definitely be on your radar. And if you were thinking about the RX 480, this would be a nice little upgrade uh, in case you're wanting to buy a card in the near future, probably move away from the 480s unless you can really find a good deal on them. Otherwise, you should be looking at the 580 now and on the NVIDIA side of things, somewhere in the 1060 line until they update that as well. So those are sort of my RX 580 uh, thoughts in a nutshell. If you like this content, then please do give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things down below. They help out a lot. Uh, if you want to check out your own RX 580, there will be some Amazon links in the description for some different variants that you may be interested in. You can also find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They're the same tag for your convenience. And as always, guys, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I am Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.